So just continuing the point that I was making, um, if by a natural right Hobbes means a brute power, then the problem is going to be that that is not transferable. I cannot transfer any of my brute powers to anybody else. I mean, think about that. I gave you the example before of how I have a brute power to jump up and down screaming obscenities. Now, I can decide not to exercise that power, but I cannot transfer that power to anybody. I can transfer an entitlement. I think I was giving the example of a car. If I own a car, then I can decide to give that car as a present to somebody else. So if we're talking about an entitlement or a claim to something that others have the duty to respect somehow, then I can transfer that to somebody else. But if we're talking about a brute power, I can't give that up. I can't transfer it to a, a ruler or to anybody else. And so therefore, there's something deeply wrong. There's some kind of an internal contradiction in Hobbes's account of how the social contract is supposed to work. I will summarize criticism number three. The criticism is, on the one hand, Hobbes claims that in the natural condition we have certain natural rights. Where do those rights come from? How is it that we have rights? Well, if by a right he means a brute power, then that makes sense. Animals have brute powers. Lions, tigers, birds have the power to fly. That's not the same thing as a right in the sense of an entitlement. So in the natural condition, Hobbes claims we have certain natural rights. Okay, well, if he means brute powers, that makes sense, but then we can't transfer them or give them up. On the other hand, if by natural rights he means some kind of entitlements or claims, that means that in the natural condition there are already going to be certain duties and obligations that people have toward one another, and the question would be, where in the world did that come from? What is it that by nature makes certain uh, makes it be that certain people have entitlements and other people have the duty to respect those rights. So here's where we could say how different Hobbes's theory is from someone like, I'll say, Aristotle or even Aquinas. Um, according to Aristotle, Things, certain behaviors are naturally appropriate and right for humans to engage in. So I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit longer, just comparing, we'll just focus on comparing Aristotle with Hobbes on this point of what some people call naturalism versus conventionalism. I did not, by the way, talk about how might Hobbes respond to criticism number three. Okay, um, maybe we'll think about that and talk about that a little bit more next time. Um, but I just want to conclude today's discussion by talking about two different ways of looking at ethics or morality. Um, one is called naturalism. And the other is called, let's call it conventionalism. Very often Hobbes is called a conventionalist. His theory is a conventionalist theory, whereas Aristotle is a naturalist. So what's the difference here? Someone who believes in naturalism believes that by nature, it's just built into the very fabric of the world and built into the very fabric of human nature 
that certain actions and certain character traits are good or right and certain actions, certain character traits are bad or wrong. Aristotle would say that because remember Aristotle believes in teleology. So by nature there's a certain end or goal that all human beings are supposed to be striving for. Okay, And remember that according to Aristotle virtue consists in those qualities which are going to somehow enable us to reach our destiny which is given to us by nature that we're supposed to reach even though not everybody reaches it right I mean that's one of the problems with teleology is well if we have a telos then how come it isn't automatic so somehow Aristotle thinks that yeah we have a telos but uh, that doesn't mean that we're gonna reach it just like the acorn doesn't necessarily turn into the oak tree even though it somehow should Okay, Aristotle believes in teleology, and therefore what that means is, what that implies, is that certain actions are good because they're going to be promoting the telos, and certain actions and certain character traits are going to be bad or wrong because they take you away from your true, natural telos. With Hobbes, we don't have teleology. There is no telos for the human beings. We have desires, we have motivations, we have wants and needs. Remember those motions within us that lead us to go eat and drink or lead us to go do whatever we need to do or want to do. So we have desires and we don't want to die and we don't want to suffer and we don't like pain and we prefer to have pleasure. So we're led to do things versus other things, but there is no telos. Okay, so the term conventionalism means that according to Hobbes, the uh, moral duties that we have or the obligations that we have, morality itself is not part of nature, it is a result of convention or human agreement. Contract, that's what the word contract means. Contract means to make some kind of agreement, okay? which wasn't there before. So it seems like, according to Hobbes, by nature, nothing is really right or wrong. But rather, human beings decide they're, they're going to agree to abide by certain rules, and that's how morality is created. To sort of give you a, uh, maybe a helpful way of thinking about this, might be somewhat misleading a little bit, is, is something like this is, let's take the rules of baseball. Okay, the rules of baseball include, for example, that you get three strikes and you're out, right? The rules of baseball include, well, there's three outs per inning or per half inning, right? Three strikes and you're out, but you, if it's four balls, you get a walk. Okay, now Hobbes would pose the following question. Uh, is it somehow true by nature that three strikes make you out? Is that true by nature that three strikes and you're out? Is it true by nature that when you have four balls, you get to walk to first? That is not true by nature. That's true by convention. The rules of baseball are conventional. At some point, people got around the table and decided to agree that, okay, let's say three strikes and you're out. They had to make some decision, I suppose. So they said, okay, three strikes. Why is it three strikes? Why isn't it four strikes? Why isn't it five balls? It's somewhat arbitrary, right? Um, on the other hand, there's something rational about it. I guess you could say, you could try to try to understand why did they decide on the number three for strikes and the number four for balls for a walk, um, but we won't go into that. There might be some reason for why they fixed on three for strikes and four for balls, but the point is that the rules of baseball are not true by nature. They are true by convention. Okay, in fact, that's true of any sport, right? Not just baseball. But Hobbes seems to be saying the same thing about the rules of morality. The rules of morality are a result of the social contract. By nature, in the natural condition, nothing is either just or unjust. There's nothing that's really right or wrong. Now, human beings realize that that's a very bad situation. They decide they want and need to get out of it, 
So they come up with this agreement to abide by certain rules and to impose upon ourselves a, a ruler who will enforce obedience, but the social contract is a result of a convention. It's not part of nature. So we have two very different views about the nature of ethics. Conventionalism with Hobbes and naturalism with Aristotle. Well, we've gone through criticisms against Hobbes. We discussed some possible answers. Uh, I did not discuss a possible answer for that third criticism. Maybe you can think about that and maybe we'll talk about that a little more next time. And so what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be uh, next time wrapping up our discussion of Hobbes and then we're going to move on to John Stuart Mill. So there is a chapter in the book on John Stuart Mill. So if you have time, please take a look at the reading on the Mill and I will see you next week. I hope you're staying safe, healthy and well. Have a great weekend.